Another lead leaves 343. Yes, another one. Halo gets nominated for best online game. Some unlocks you'll definitely want to take a look at before the end of this video, as well as a group of people figure out a way to beat the campaign in split screen. And Megan the Stallion throws it back for Master Chief. So if you want to know more, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. Yeah, you didn't hear me wrong. Apparently at TwitchCon, uh, Mega Stallion threw it back for Master Chief, which is pretty awesome. Here's the video of it. So yeah, you don't see that every day. This was a surprise appearance at like a Megan Stallion concert that was part of the TwitchCon event that happened recently. It just goes to show you that Master Chief will continue to be the most iconic gaming character of all time. In some recent news, 343 narrative director Dan Chosage has left 343 to join Jar of Sparks, who is the development team for Jerry Hook, who left 343 as well. Look, man, I feel like everyone at 343 is getting poached right now. Dan Chosich, who worked at 343 for over 11 years, almost 12 years of his life spent at 343. So this guy has spent a good amount of time. He was the narrative experience director, especially the guy in charge of basically all the kinds of different types of experiences you would have involving the narrative side of things, which obviously is about mainly campaign related things. He did state that he was really excited to see what 343 was going to be pulling off when it comes to the story elements of the seasonal side of things, which I mean, what, judging by the end of season two, the second half of that event, well, it left a lot to be desired. So I would say that the first half of the narrative event for season two was actually really good. I enjoyed that a lot. And of course the campaign, I feel for Halo Infinite is amazing. Only time will tell how this really would affect Halo Infinite's development as we do know that Microsoft is currently on a hiring freeze right now because they are fearing a recession coming within America. So 343's hands, I feel like are continually being tied by Microsoft. But hey, you know, we're not getting new developments on story side of things at all until season three, which comes around in March. So. I mean, there's plenty of time. Now this might be a bit of a hot take for many of you guys to hear this, but a popular UK website named Trusted Reviews has given Halo Infinite the best online game award. The winner of the best online game award goes to Halo Infinite. I mean, it's, as a Halo fan, I love to see Halo win, but sometimes I feel like game media try to appease certain types of developers and people to try to get maybe a little early access to certain things maybe with trusted reviews trying to get a little extra side of say 343 that uh, they might try to get some benefit out of this but i think we can all kind of read what's happening here so again you can't always trust gaming news media when it comes to well gaming news and media the potential award that i feel like Halo Infinite and 343 could potentially earn would be about the soundtrack coming here saying for your Grammy consideration that is being considered to be nominated for a Grammy is the soundtrack for Halo Infinite. Honestly guys like say what you will about the game but the soundtrack itself of, of Halo Infinite is really freaking good. I could see myself all the time just kind of like just vibing in the menu screens just listening to the music i genuinely enjoy it i actually don't bother playing music while i'm streaming because i think the in-game music is so good i didn't even know that the grammys are even available for gaming soundtracks but i think that's amazing now for all you couch co-op fans do you want to feel some pain well here you go some people were able to finish the campaign in co-op on xbox for you guys and it's just like it just hurts to see this it just does uh, I mean, they did say there were a couple issues that they ran into for the most part, but overall, they were able to play four player split screen co op and finish the game. Which I feel like tells you one thing that, like, did it really need to be cut? Like, there's definitely development that's been made on this feature. People want it. It might not be perfect, but you might be able to put it into the game in some capacity. Obviously, having glitches like this, you can see, obviously, with this image that they were able to glitch into like the non-playable space where like Esparza comes to pick you up, right? So you're definitely not supposed to be here. So this is definitely a glitch within the split screen experience that obviously shouldn't be happening, which could be a reason why it's been held back for so long. And maybe another reason why it's completely scrapped, because maybe this issue reappears itself throughout the entirety of the entire of the campaign. Of course, we don't know for sure, because all we really know is that they're just reallocating resources to focus on the live service but i mean 
It's it's doable at least. Now for Game Pass Ultimate member, you've been noticing you, these coatings coming around for us. Now we have some confirmation that these new coatings will be coming in for the sniper rifle, the Hydra, as well as the Spanker rocket launcher. All weapons that definitely need a lot more coatings to them. Glad to see this happening. Of course, this is only going to be available for your Game Pass Ultimate users as well as those are people who are signed up for Game Pass who can access games on Xbox and PC. So, uh, I mean, at least it's something better than nothing. Of course, right now, it's pretty low key when it comes to the amount of coatings you have available for yourself. But this upcoming weekend of the October 20th through the 23rd, not this exact weekend, but coming right around the corner here, guys, is the HCS World Finals and coming with a massive drop of Twitch drops for you guys right here that you're definitely going to want to check out here. We have confirmation now that the Gladiator's Edge armor coating will be available for you guys to grind for for that weekend of Twitch, along with the Gladiator's Edge battle rifle, a weapon charm showcasing the trophy, as well as another coating that's just kind of like a light white blue kind of coating to it as well. They went all out with this. I love it. It's amazing. We finally get a chance to have your diamond encrusted BR, your diamond encrusted Spartan now available for you guys to grind for on the weekend of the 20th through the 23rd. Though there is a catch, as there always is, that the first day you'll be able to get the nameplate. The second day will be another nameplate you can track for. Days three and four is when you'll actually get those coatings. So day three and four, you'll be able to get the Mark Seven coating. And then day four will be the Gladiator's Edge coating, I'm assuming for all of the other cores. And then if you watch the grand finals for most likely an hour, which is usually the threshold, the Gladiator's Edge battle rifle will become available for you as, as well as the trophy charm as well. So we got plenty of stuff to look forward to that weekend. And for a heads up, I will be at HCS Worlds, guys. It's only like a 40 minute drive for me, so I definitely will be be there if you see me make sure to stop by and say hi i'd love to see you guys I mean, we met up a couple times with a few subscribers and people that follow the channel back in kansas city when i went to that event hope to see you guys all there i do plan to make a little bit of content about this world event as well as it's much more than just worlds they also have a halo fest going on where jen taylor and steve downs that's right cortana and master chief themselves are going to be at this event doing meet and greets and signings and stuff like that. I might be able to coordinate a few interviews or something like that. We'll just have to wait and see though. Now, I think we just got a leaked roadmap for Halo Infinite. Yeah, you heard me right on that one here. Sir Asia, who is a credible leaky boy to be referenced quite often on the channel here, cited the kind of maps and content that we'll be seeing for the next few seasons. Seeing for season three, we'll get Exile and Ridgeline as showcase that we've seen previously. But for season four, we'll get Engine, which is a BTB map. Beltway, which is an arena map. Season five will be Forbidden, which is a BTB map. Crystal Case being an arena map. In season six being Frigate, which is a BTB map. And he said that Forest is actually an arena map. Now, I did reach out to Sir Asia talking about this as well. And he said, I said, how did you know this? And it's apparently it's all mapped out in a data mined files. They all have their different notations of when these different maps will be released. And so we should expect two maps per season. Hopefully by the time season three rolls around that we'll get to see true seasonality when we actually get like a new set of maps and game modes every three months. In my previous video we did talk about the recent events going on with Halo Infinite saying that it does sound like the engine has started to kind of ramp up to speed where it needs to be at launch yeah for the first year, pretty bad. But now things are starting to get a lot better where we could actually get seasonality, especially with the reallocated resources from well, split screen in other parts of Halo, focusing on the live service, we should begin that seasonality coming our way, guys. And when that does happen, truly, I'll let you guys know here on the channel. But wait, there's more. We have a little bit of information talking about the next campaign for Halo Infinite, guys. That is either could be dated information or just some general text when you see different job descriptions, but a shared Skybox Lab new position they're hiring for Halo Infinite, saying so they're looking for an open world campaign. If you guys read through this, you can see that with this position that they'll be working closely with designers, technical designers, software engineers, and world gameplay team as your collaborative work will come to life developing and supporting the Halo open world campaign experience. Now, why would they be hiring new people on the team just to keep the current campaign going? Well, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Now, we have heard a lot of information on like leaks and dots being connected about Halo the Endless, saying that maybe it's its own game, maybe it's a tie-in to Halo Infinite's campaign. 
We don't know for sure. We just know that Halo of the Endless is something probably campaign related that's coming our way. Now, this could be a continuation of the open world feel, which I would be all for. I think Halo Infinite works super well as an open world game. I know many have complained that the lack of set pieces and saying that the open world feels dead in some kind of way, which I really doubt that because if you've ever played ODST's open world, that's a true like dead open world experience. At least Halo Infinite, you can go around the open world and do different objectives to progress your character forward. ODST hot take, sorry, I didn't warn you guys there. Continuing on with the leaked information goodness, guys, I'm sure you guys remember this rifle or blaster, I should say, that was shared with us before the release of Halo Infinite. The Armament Blaster is a forerunner weapon that was apparently supposed to be in Halo. We've seen leaked, leaked images and gameplay of it, fully not finished, obviously, uh, but we haven't seen this at all. But we recently got some information that would set in some of you Armament Blaster boys. With our credible leaky boy again, Sarasia saying that the Armament Blaster is fully scrapped, not coming anytime soon. Now, Sarasia does state that he doesn't know why it was scrapped, but this, I think, just kind of comes with standard game development where, like, you come up with cool ideas, things you can kind of create, but ultimately, has struggled with coming coming into the game and ultimately can be scrapped. We saw this with every Halo game. There's always been cut content, stuff like that. Saying, the, saying that the gun was scrapped around late 2020, which is when the toy started appearing. So it's just a really unfortunate timing. Again, kind of showcasing a lot of the different changes that Halo Infinite was going through throughout its development. There were really cool ideas that were maybe scrapped or just you know reiterated in some capacity or held. Or later date and for the last bit of news we have for you guys today and this gigantic news video which if you guys like these kind of videos make sure you tap that like button let me know you want to see some more content like this and it greatly helps out the video and channel Unishake recently hit up on Twitter to get some more information about when the next Forge video is going to come out, which is going to be crucial, as well as if there's going to be another drop when it comes to these uh, drop pods, which sadly enough is not looking to be the case. In a response about saying if we're going to get an October drop pod, Unishake hit up on Twitter here saying, saying right now the team is focused on delivering Forge network co-op campaign, match XP, and more with the winter update. We'll be sharing our final Forge Fundamentals videos next week. So not this week, guys. We, know, we already know that for sure then, which is going to be a really important video. We'll talk about that in a second here. And hosting the HS World Championships and drive further details around the winter update. So basically, you should like saying like, hey, we're hella busy. Leave us alone. Not really, of course, but you know what I mean. And the reason why this last part, part four, is going to be crucial because it's going to be file share and canvases. So what can you actually forge on and how do you share that content with everybody? Because this is going to be absolutely important. You can make the best forge in the world, but if there is no way to share that content with other creators or other players, well, it makes things quite difficult. So uh, rumor is that there is going to be a UI update when it comes to when Forge launches here in November, guys, for the winter update. It will also bring a file share and all the kind of other things you expect to come with it. Now, now we do know that the custom game browser will not be coming with the launch of Forge. It'll be coming with Season 3, which comes out in March. Again, this is all tentative and subject to change, but that's the current plan at the moment. Now, Microsoft must be just fuming at 343, not because of the current state of Halo Infinite, which could definitely be better. I think Microsoft is more mad about how the Halo TV show ended up actually declining the popularity of Halo compared to the Cyberpunk show, which actually increased the popularity of the show. I'll talk about that all within this video. If you guys want to check it out, thank you much for watching. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.